thank you for taking a little bit of your lunch break, um, turning down that second crumble, um, because you wanted to hear about Kubernetes in the context of PowerShell. So let us begin. Hey, is this person who wasn't on the speakers list? Looks kind of like someone we know, but no, is not Chrissy. My name's Amanda Dabler. Um, I work for a large German auto parts manufacturer that is in very many ways a very traditional IT operation, but we have a lot of developers who will not be denied Kubernetes, so we are figuring out how to provide it to them in baby steps. Um, if you feel like reading more, follow me on Twitter or check out my personal blog. All right, what's Kubernetes? So, Kubernetes is an orchestrator for primarily Docker, but there are other container runtimes, but for your purposes, Docker. Um, here's a rough architecture diagram. Um, a Kubernetes cluster has master nodes and worker nodes. AKS, or Azure Kubernetes Service, lets you just worry about the worker nodes. Microsoft manages the master nodes for you. All you have to pay for are the VMs running the worker nodes, and the worker nodes are where your Docker containers will run inside of Kubernetes pods. Okay, so AKS has managed Kubernetes, and so that means Microsoft spins up the clusters for you. You don't have to mess with installing the things, but we still have some management to do. So, Azure CLI, I mean, this is a PowerShell conference, so why are we talking about Azure CLI? Um, that's because Azure CLI is kind of a necessary evil for AKS at this point. Um, any new features in preview mode are generally only available via Azure CLI. And unfortunately, even some very necessary routine features are only available via Azure CLI. I tried this last night with one of my statically sized clusters that was made outside of preview mode, and even there, I wasn't able to update the Kubernetes version. So, oh yes, and there is no Kubernetes module. Um, I know a lot of you do. You, how many of you use the Docker for PowerShell module? Okay, a couple of you. Yeah, there's not even that for Kubernetes, so you will be using the bash style command line tools. Okay, so why, why are we even messing with PowerShell in this context since I just told you you're going to have to use bash style tools to manage it? Okay, well, the nightmare finally happened there was an escape vulnerability in Docker and pretty much every other container ride in time. Um, Run C had one, and this was a couple months ago. Um, we all knew it was gonna happen at some point. Fortunately, it wasn't public before there was a fix to Docker. However, there being a fix to Docker and that fix to Docker making it into a bunch of Kubernetes clusters, two different things. So, PowerShell to the rescue. Um, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, <laughs> so, um, since I'm relearning Bash from back in my college Linux days, um, I end up writing my script mostly in PowerShell, but using the CLI, Azure CLI and kubectl, or kubectl, depending on what you wanna call it, um, so I had three major things I needed to do. I needed to figure out which point release was the right one for a given Kubernetes version. Um, the reason that mattered was I was doing this without telling the devs or asking their permission to upgrade their Kubernetes versions because this was a really, really nasty vulnerability. So I decided the middle way was to take the latest point release within a major Kubernetes release because major Kubernetes releases do add features and can even change the way API components work. So don't 
just go upgrade a Kubernetes cluster to a new major version without telling the devs affected that you're doing that. Okay, and so I need to figure out what that was. Then to tell AKS to update each cluster to its new desired version. And then finally, after all the nodes were cycled, checking each node to make sure that it did have the updated Docker runtime and that the vulnerability was no longer present. Okay, so, wait, eh, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to code now. What am I doing on top of perfect? Um, okay, all right. All right, um, can everyone see that okay? Cool. All right, so these were the hotfix versions for each major version. So 1.12 was 1.12.5 at the time. Okay, so loaded in that little hash table. And pulled in an AKS cluster object. Um, I made my own AKS cluster objects by pulling in from each of my subscriptions because I have three subscriptions to manage and then whacking it into convert from JSON. Yes, we will see if my connection is good. Um, yes, oh, so um, he asked if for the people who haven't seen the output of that command yet, which would probably be most of y'all, could I please do that? And yes, I can, just a sec, ignore all that. That was me trying to find Kubernetes as a package. Um, so let's see, so AZ AKS show in world. And I hate the way that we name resource groups in my company. That was not my decision. Okay, and I have the AKS preview on it. Okay, so there is all the JSON, including my tags. All right, so there's all the information that got dumped out about that cluster. And the information you get back from the Azure CLI for an AKS cluster is richer than the information you get back with the get-azaks command. So that's why I still favor it. Okay, but get back to the stories. Um, so, all right, so this is what I wrote initially, because I naively thought since the Kubernetes version command was there, it would work. It did not, it failed. So, this is what I ended up doing. pulling in all the clusters within a given subscription, converting them to JSON, and then applying my git AKS hotfix version command to find the nearest point release that would work, and then running the upgrade on them. No wait. Always use no wait when doing anything with AKS, otherwise you will be waiting because when you upgrade a cluster, it remakes all the nodes. Okay, then Finally, ran that. Yes. No, it does not. It, no, it upgrades the nodes one by one. And this is also why in a production Kubernetes cluster or a cluster you care about the uptime of, you always have at least three nodes. Okay, then finally, once I was pretty sure that the first cluster I kicked in should have updated by now, I then ran this to get my clusters in again. Pull the cluster credentials for each one. And then 
ran the kubectl command to get the data about each one and just simply see the runtime version. And that is my time. So anyway, um, yep, if you have any further questions, come see me. Otherwise, save the party carrots. Scan that code, donate money. Thanks for coming. <laughs>